S&P 500 dividend aristocrat stocks with the lowest P ratio, the price to earnings ratio. That's the topic of discussion today. These dividend aristocrats have increased their dividends for at least 25 consecutive years. Johnson & Johnson, ExxonMobil, Chevron, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, Walmart. These are some of the global brands which are included in this list. P ratio or price to earnings ratio is one of the most widely used metric to determine the stock's valuation. It shows if a company's stock price is undervalued or overvalued. And why this is important, as Warren Buffett once said, price is what you pay, value is what you get. Hello everyone, if this is the first time you're joining the channel, my name is David Das, a retired engineer, and you are watching my YouTube channel, Think and Retire. Please watch this video till the end, as I will provide a name of one ETF that will cover the theme of dividend aristocrat stocks, with only one investment. I will also provide a second bonus, so please stay tuned. Let's get started, shall we? So that we are all on the same page, our objective is to find five dividend aristocrat stocks with the lowest P ratio, the price to earnings ratio, and we will only use the trailing 12 months P ratio. Please keep in mind that there's lots of literature and YouTube videos available about the P ratio. P ratio shall not be used on its own. There are many limitations to the P-E ratio, such as not including the earnings growth into the picture. As P alone doesn't say much, we will compare the P-E ratio of the company with three metrics. Number one, the five-year average P-E ratio of the company. Number two, the sector P-E ratio, so that we can compare apples to apples. And number three, the P-E ratio of the S&P 500 index. And then determine if the company's P-E ratio is below or above those metrics. If they are below, then the company is considered undervalued, and if it is over, it will consider it's overvalued. This is just one of the many techniques for stock evaluation. There are various other methods, such as discounted cash flow model, there's an asset valuation model, but we like to keep it very simple, and we'll use this as a rough estimate. Please do your own research and verify the numbers from different platforms before investing. So let's talk briefly about dividend aristocrat stocks and price to earnings ratio or the P-E ratio. As I mentioned before, dividend aristocrat stocks have been increasing their dividends for a minimum of 25 consecutive years. There are a few more criteria to be included in this list, and this whole process is being done by SP Global. There are other dividend aristocrats available, like say for example for Canadian dividend aristocrats, but for this discussion we will focus only on the S&P 500 dividend aristocrat stocks. As of April 30, 2024, there are 68 stocks in the dividend aristocrat list, and these are the top 10 holdings, and as you can see, Triple M is leading. I will talk about Triple M shortly. This is the sector breakdown with consumer staple sector leading and industrial sector just behind. Consumer staples is also referred to as consumer defensive in some platforms. According to SP Global, this list is updated every quarter in January, April, July, and October. After the last update, two companies have cut their dividends. One of them is Triple M with ticker symbol MMM. The other company has a ticker symbol LEG. LEG has also been removed from S&P 500 index. So I'm assuming during the July 2024 update, these two companies will be removed from the dividend aristocrat list. Now let's talk about the P ratio. The P ratio, or the price to earnings ratio, is calculated by dividing the current stock price by the earnings per share. A high P ratio can mean that the stock's price is high relative to its earnings and possibly overvalued. A low P ratio might indicate that the current stock price is low relative to earnings. I will explain this with a small example. If the current stock price is $10 and the earnings per share is 1, then the P ratio is 10 divided by 1 equal to 10. That means for $1 of earnings, you are spending $10. On the other hand, if the stock price is $10, but the earnings per share is 2, then the P ratio is 10 divided by 2 equal to 5. In this case, for $1 of earnings, we are spending $5. So which stock is cheaper to own? Obviously the second one, which has a lower P ratio. A stock should be compared to other stocks in its sector or industry group to determine whether it's overvalued or undervalued. Similar companies should be compared to each other like insurance to insurance, energy to energy, and so on and so forth. Be careful about discrepancy of data from different platforms. Always verify from different sources 
and sometimes I even do my own calculation from the raw data. I put this spreadsheet together on Google Sheet. The cool thing is that as soon as you enter the ticker symbol on column A, the next nine columns are automatically populated, fetching the data from Google Finance Portal. I have added the data for the last four columns manually, and these are yield, payout ratio, years of dividend growth, and sector. The data is scanned as a market close on May 15th, 2024. Although I have included dividend aristocrat stocks in this spreadsheet, you can add your own favorite stocks and customize it to your satisfaction. I will make this spreadsheet available to you as my second bonus, and I will tell you how to download it at the end. I have now started my spreadsheet from lowest P ratio to a highest P ratio, and I will only discuss the top five. I have added three more columns to the right, five-year average P ratio of this company, number two, the sector P ratio, and the third is the P ratio of the S&P 500 index, and I have used SPY. I calculated the five-year average P ratio from a website called macrotrends.net, as I could not easily find the published data on five-year average. If you know of a website where this data is readily available, please share in the comment section below as we can all learn from each other. I have obtained the sector P information from finbiz.com and the SPY P ratio from Yahoo Finance. You will note that for all the five companies, the current P ratio is less than the respective sector P ratios and the S&P 500 index P ratio. As for comparing with the five-year average P ratios, all the companies have their current P ratios below the five-year average, except for one stock, AFL. I can therefore conclude that all companies are generally undervalued except AFLAG, which is AFL. You can take it one step further by comparing the current P ratio of the company to other companies in the same industry. For curiosity, I have used the MSN money to check the analyst ratings of these five stocks. As per Emerson Money, now it makes sense why analysts have rated strong buy for Emerson Electric and buy ratings for Cincinnati Financial, Johnson & Nucor, and a whole rating for AFL. So let's summarize what we have just discussed. We spoke briefly about the S&P 500 dividend aristocrat stocks and P ratio on the price to earnings ratio. On a spreadsheet, we listed all dividend aristocrat stocks and we have sorted them from lowest to highest P ratio. We paid five companies with the lowest P ratios and then compared those ones with the sector P ratios, the S&P 500 index P ratio, and the five-year average P ratios of the same companies. Four companies, Emerson Electric, Cincinnati Financial, Johnson & Johnson, and Nucor have their company P ratio below the five-year average P ratios, the sector P ratios, and the S&P 500 index P ratios. Only AFLAG's current P ratio is above its five-year average, but still below sector and S&P 500 index P ratios. As I promised before, if you're interested in this S&P 500 dividend aristocrat stocks, but not sure which ones to buy, you can buy only one ETF. That's called ProShares S&P 500 dividend aristocrats ETF with the ticker symbol NOBL to participate in these theme of stocks. And for the second bonus, I provided a link of my spreadsheet in the description box below for you to access. I hope you found this information in this video useful. Please like and share it. It helps my channel. If you have not subscribed to my channel, please do so so you do not miss my future content. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.